Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you everything you need to know in order to make one of the most powerful and greatest fertilizers for your seedlings, your transplants, and even your adult plants. Everything loves this stuff, so pay attention. So I'm going to say some things about it here, and then I'm going to take you outside and into the basement and show you exactly how to make this wonderful and virtually free gift of nature. But the first thing that we have to understand is the natural cycle of things. How does nature fertilize itself? The plants go deep into the ground with the roots and mine the minerals that they need. They store the minerals into the plant tissue. And once the season is over or the life cycle of the plant is over, it drops to the ground and the leaves drop to the ground and they decay. And immediately, as soon as they drop to the ground, the decomposition begins to happen through the microorganisms uh, and the soil food web. And after the decomposition, the, the minerals, the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that were tied up in the plant material become available once again to the plant. You see, it's a cycle like this, life and death. In fact, the amount of life in, an, in any given area is in direct proportion to the amount of death and decay that has happened there. So we can utilize this with our home made compost pile. Hopefully you have a compost pile and hopefully it is in contact with the earth. Only in the rare situations where you need to use a compost tumbler do I recommend it. Like if you're in the inner city composting on gardening on concrete or something, okay. But other than that, you want your compost to be in contact with the earth. That's how the earthworms and all the good microorganisms get up in there. So compost is the plant material. So we are just mimicking nature with our compost pile. And once the material breaks down, it becomes available to the plants again, just like it does in nature. So what we are going to do is we are going to take our finished compost and we are going to make an extract out of it. Now, what is the difference between a compost extract and a compost tea? A compost tea utilizes compost, but then it provides food for the microbes. And uh, typically we aerate this and it takes several days. And the uh, purpose of that is to multiply the microorganisms. So they need time to breed and multiply. I will have videos on this uh, coming on this channel in, this, in the future on this season. But for now, we're going to keep it super simple and we're going to make compost extract, which compost extract only takes just a few minutes because we're not interested in multiplying the microorganisms. We don't need to. What we're interested in with compost extract is extracting those uh, plant available nutrients and the the, um, the final product of when the compost is broken down the uh, nutrients are very water soluble and so we want to capture that all right that's going to be very good for the plants it's also going to have microbial life but primarily the nutrients that the plant needs in a well-balanced form and we're going to add a nitrogen boost. So preferably, as you will see in a minute, uh, we're going to use a certain amount of the fish fertilizer from the video that I made. This is the J-Dom fish fertilizer. We're going to use some of that. If you don't have the fish fertilizer to add, then it is acceptable to use the urine instead. Okay, but make sure you use the amounts I'm about to tell you here in a moment. So let us get into it and uh, I will show you how to make this stuff and then we'll come back and I'll tell you exactly how to use it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is show you guys some compost that is not going to be suitable for this. And this is very important, so pay attention. Now, this is the compost pile that we made with the leaf mold, the chicken manure, and a couple of the other ingredients. And we're letting it uh, decompose over the winter. We've turned it a couple of times, and it started to really break down a lot. Uh, but when you look at it, you can still recognize individual ingredients. You see there's leaves in it. We can still see some of the chicken manure. We can still see some of the, the twigs that were in it and all of that. So this is not going to be broken down enough for using in this solution. Okay, so... Find your source of compost, and if it looks like this, it's best to let it decompose a bit longer. So we're going to put the tarp back on that, and we're going to go over to our slow compost bin over here. And we're going to go to the bottom of the bin, where it's in contact with the earth. This is always important, my friends. And we're going to take from the bottom of here. And we can see that this is nice and broken down, rich in nutrients and organic matter and microbial life. It looks like a, a coffee or finely uh, uh, ground beef, something like that. But we wanna look and see, make sure there's no earthworms in there because we want to put those back in the pile. Uh, we don't wanna drown them. Next thing we want to do is get a strainer of some kind. Uh, this is a five gallon paint strainer. You can also use like a t-shirt or something similar. 
And then we're going to put uh, for a one gallon container, which we'll be using, we're going to put about two to three handfuls of the compost in it. For a five gallon bucket of this stuff, you want to uh, use about five or six handfuls of compost. And uh, you see here it's rich in nutrients and organic matter. And then we're going to put it into the strainer and we're going to head back inside. Then we're going to take a one gallon container and we're going to get the rainwater. Guys, rainwater is always the best option. So set you up a rain capture system. Let me know if you guys want to see how to do that in future videos. I can make a couple on that. If you don't have access to the rainwater, then you can uh, utilize tap water. Just let it sit for at least 24 hours to off gas. And then we're going to take the bag of compost and we're just going to dunk it into the water. And you can see here immediately the water soluble and plant available nutrients uh, uh, leach out into the water. And this is what we want, guys. So we just dunk it in here a few times for maybe a minute or two. We're not trying to leave it in there to steep or anything. This is just compost extract. So we're just trying to extract all of the readily available plant uh, available and water soluble nutrients so now we have this uh, very rich brew but we're gonna boost it so in order to boost it we're gonna use the uh, JDOM JLF the fish fertilizer and this is nice and rich uh, with organic nutrients and minerals all plant available so we're gonna use that and yes it uh, does have a smell to it but if you use this or the urine at one ounce a gallon with this microbial brew like this you are not going to smell it because the microbes neutralize it. And so it end, ends up just smelling like uh, a fresh rain or soil. There's not a bad smell. So do not worry about that, my friends. Now we are going to uh, put it into our receptacle and apply to the plants. And we just trim the onion seedlings again. And so we're going to, you can foliar with this. Uh, you, you can use it. Um, as a soil drench or bottom water and then this is what you're gonna have guys you see how there's nothing gnarly or any no molds or fungus on the soil everything looks nice and healthy so that's how it's done my friends you have made one of the greatest natural fertilizers that there is for the young plants now how often are we gonna utilize this we're gonna use it I'm gonna say one time per week because ideally you want at least one or preferably two uh, applications of pure water in between the, the applications of this compost extract, this boosted compost extract, okay? Uh, but if you notice that there's some deficiencies in the plants, like the yellowing of the leaves or the purpling of the stems, the magnesium deficiency, all this kind of stuff, then you can apply it every watering. You really can't burn the plants with this stuff. So uh, it's really good for everything, okay? And like I said before, it's going to keep all the pests and pathogens in check. We do not have to worry about bringing pathogens inside and stuff because it's all in a balanced form my friends this stuff really works okay so that's pretty much it my friends if you feel like you gained something from the video give it a thumbs up share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge share it to the facebook groups and everywhere that you can helps the channel also leave a comment first thing that comes to mind and big shout out to everybody that is using the link in the description to make a donation to the PayPal account. That helps me to help keep making more of these videos. And if you have not done so already, check out the Garden Like a Viking Instagram account where I'm posting daily uh, reels and pictures and stuff about things I don't want to make full videos about. So check that out. And I will see you next time, my friends.